Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me again today as we talk about COVID-19, specifically here in Erie County. We have two new confirmed positive cases in Erie County for a total of 19 positive cases and 530 total negative tests. One of the new cases is in their 80s and one is in their 20s. Investigations continue on these cases and others and overall contact tracing by Erie County Department of Health continues on all of those open cases. As you've heard maybe recently from the state, they now have 8,420 positive cases in Pennsylvania with 102 deaths. That's 1,404 more cases just overnight and 12 more deaths in the last 24 hours. Included in those numbers is Warren County having one case and Crawford County with five cases. Social distancing is still the best tool we have, the best way to prevent the spread of COVID-19. I heard someone say that we are actually practicing physical distancing, not truly social distancing. And that is true because while we are keeping our physical distance from each other of a minimum of six feet, we still need to find ways to connect with our family, our friends, our loved ones. Please stay at home unless you absolutely must go out. I saw a Twitter this morning from the governor saying, don't go out as though someone else's life depends on it and how true that is. Don't touch your face, practice proper hand washing and personal hygiene. I'm excited to share that Erie County has gone up another level on the Unicast social distancing report. We went from a B yesterday to an A minus today and our arrow is showing up. So we are doing better each time I look at that website and I wanna thank all of you who are helping us get to that better score. And there are now 30 Pennsylvania counties, unfortunately, with higher numbers than Erie County. And we are, as I said, the 15th most populous county. So that just goes to show that the work being done here in Erie County by our health uh, care professionals, by our public health professionals, by so many, and particularly each one of you, we should be proud of what we're doing because we are really keeping our numbers down and that's what we're all trying to do together. So thank you for following the guidelines, for staying at home, for keeping that physical distance from one another, and for practicing those good personal hygiene that we have been talking about. Our environmental task force team received 74 new complaints yesterday, and they continue to make those field inspections. And uh, interesting, but many of the calls we are getting now are businesses who are part of that life-sustaining workforce that's open, trying to find out how they can best comply and keep everyone safe. So that's great that those businesses are being proactive and contacting the very knowledgeable staff at the Erie County Department of Health. And this Sunday is Palm Sunday, um, a very uh, special day in the lives of those who are Christian in our community. And I would like to address the distribution of palms that we know uh, is often so important to, to many of us. Our environmental team offers these suggestions for all churches wishing to do that. Do not dispense the palms in a manner that would encourage people to gather in front of your place of worship. Set up a drive-through operation to distribute those palms and ensure that everyone that comes remains in their vehicle, have one person handing the palms to each vehicle let the vehicle, vehicles quickly advance and don't engage in conversation. And the person dispensing the palms can be wearing gloves and a mask and to protect themselves and to protect the visitors coming to receive the palms. And then the person dispensing the palms should be instructed to thoroughly wash their hands both before and after putting on the gloves. I also want to go to the issue of masks. We've talked about masks a few times, and just an hour or so ago, Dr. Levine from the Pennsylvania Department of Health made some changes in the recommendations. 
So what we are asking now is that everyone who goes out in public wear some sort of mask. We ask you to leave the surgical masks and of course the N95s for the people who are on the front lines and really need those masks most. But a handmade mask that you have, there's instructions online, there's some on our website at eriecountypa.gov or that someone else has made for you, even a bandana or a scarf at least would help to reduce the transfer of any kind of disease back and forth. But again, we ask that the surgical masses and the N95 be left for the healthcare professionals as we still don't have enough of those masks. You can find more about masks both on our webpage, eriecountypa.gov, and certainly on the Pennsylvania Department of Health's webpage. As I mentioned yesterday, April is County Government Month. With all that's taking place, we want you to be aware of some more resources available in Erie County government to help our residents to stay healthy, both physically and mentally. So now I'd like to invite John DiMatteo, the Director of Erie County's Department of Human Services, to say a, a few words to you. John? Thank you, Kathy. It's great to be here this afternoon. Uh, for those of you who may not know, the Department of Human Services is made up of the Office of Children and Youth, the Office of Drug and Alcohol Abuse, and the Office of Intellectual Disabilities and Mental Health. Today, I thought I'd share a little bit of information during this pandemic to give you a little bit of comfort, I think, during this time. We've had a lot of questions related to services to our consumers, and I'm glad to be able to report to you that the majority of our service providers have continued to provide services through this time, albeit be a little bit different than our normal service delivery. Some are still in person, uh, but others are being done via video or telephone or other technologies. So that's a little bit of a, of a change for us, but it, it's uh, something that people are starting to be used to. Uh, I'd like to thank each one of those providers. There's over 200 different providers that we contract with here in Erie County. I'd like to thank them and the thousands of people who work with those individuals for providing that care for our neediest populations. We've had questions around access to services. So if you have services already with a provider, please continue to use the phone numbers and emails that you normally would with those providers. All of them are still online. Uh, but if you're new to services, I wanted to provide some numbers to you today that would be able to help you access those. And I'll go through each of those um, by category. So if you're looking for services for the first time in children and youth uh, to report child abuse, uh, we'd like you to call Childline. They're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's a state number. Uh, it's 1-800. 9320313 that's 800-932-0313 those cases are tracked at the state and they're handed off to our local office if there's somebody in Erie County involved for drug and alcohol services I'd like you to call our office of drug and alcohol abuse here at Erie County the number is 451-6877 that's 451-6877 Staff in the office there can help you uh, with an assessment uh, or even to just help answer some questions as related to provider access. For intellectual disabilities and autism services, we'd like you to call Erie County Care Management at 528-0600. That's Erie County Care Management, 528-0600. There's been a lot of talk about mental health services over the past two to three weeks now since we've had this COVID-19. And we've talked a lot about it, and Kathy has brought a lot of those numbers to you originally. If you have a mental health emergency, we'd like you to call Crisis Services. The number there is 456-2014. That's 456-2014. That's only for emergencies. COVID-19 has made many of us anxious, nervous, and uncomfortable. So during this time, we've launched a couple of warm lines. So here in Erie County, uh, last week Kathy told you about uh, a warm line that Erie County Management set up for us, and that's available Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 5, and the number is 814-273-7007. That's 814-273-7007. Launched yesterday by the State Department of Human Services, is another warm line, and this one will be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The number is 1-855-2842-494. 
That's 1-855-284-2494. And that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you're anxious, you're nervous, you just want some clarification, um, you want to know about mental health services, or you just want some comfort, it's a line that you can call. For housing and homeless services, we've set up uh, a coordinated entry process here in Erie County over the past couple of years. We want you to continue to use that number. The number is 814-SHELTER. That's 814-743-5837. 814-743-5837. During this time, we've continued to need volunteers. And a couple of days ago, there were people talking about how you could volunteer. We'd like to encourage you, if you're able to, uh, if you're in good health, to log on to pa211nw.org and click on volunteers. Anything you could do to help would be greatly appreciated by our providers. Thank you. Thank you, John, and, and thank you to everyone out there providing these services. Erie County truly is blessed with very um, skilled and compassionate services for those struggling from mental health, intellectual disability, drug and alcohol issues, um, and a myriad of other issues that we know um, still need to be addressed during this time and maybe even more so. All of those phone numbers and email and websites can be found on our website under the COVID-19 page, eriecountypa.gov. So if you didn't catch those numbers, go on our website and, and contact or look at the uh, COVID website, eriecountypa.gov. This pandemic continues, and I want to address one more thing um, that we had talked about yesterday, I think. It was about a guideline for people coming off of an airplane. Uh, we have now developed a uh, flyer that will be handed to every person coming off an airplane that's uh, disembarking here at Erie International Airport. We're also going to get these into the hands of people coming off of a bus, a Greyhound bus, into our community, and also uh, at the Amtrak station. So this will be available and handed to each person entering our community, whether they're a resident returning from somewhere or whether there's someone new to our county, we want them to understand that we are under a stay at home order and that they need to um, be quarantined for 14 days upon their arrival, as well as some other very good information. And lastly, before I go to the questions, um, next month is, or next, I'm sorry, next week is Public Health Week. And I can assure you that every single person who works at your county department of public health has been working long hours, long days to keep all of us safe during this time. Every practitioner, whether it's our call takers, our enforcement, ta our en environmental task force, our nurses, uh, each healthcare worker there is really working to the max. So I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor and to join me in thanking them. We've seen on the TV, and rightfully so, so many people thanking uh, the people who work in hospitals and clinics and taking tests and EMTs and police and fire. Please help me thank our public health heroes next week. So if you can do that, send them a nice video, a nice message at um, ecdhinfo at eriecountypa.gov. That's Erie County Health Department, ecdh info, I-N-F-O, at eriecountypa.gov, or if you want to use the old way, snail mail, we, they would love a note, too. Maybe your kids want to draw a nice picture for them and send them a thank you. We have an address for that at 606 West 2nd Street, Erie, Pennsylvania, 16507. That's 606 West 2nd Street, Erie, 16507. Thank you for helping me thank them for what they're doing right now to keep all of us safe. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to the media. And today we will start with Jet TV. Do you have a question for me? Yep, hi Kathy, Samir here. So are any of the new cases related? To each other? I don't, yeah, I, don't like, are they I actually don't have any, um, I have very little detail on these cases. They're, they're new into us uh, today and um, the staff, as I was before I came on air here, was still working through all the contact tracing. So I just know that we have two individuals, one in their 20s and one in their 80s. Are they travel related or anything? 
I don't have that detail and I will have that for you tomorrow. Got it. Okay, and now we'll go to Erie Times News. Uh, hi, Kathy, it's David. Um, just one follow-up on the, on the patient. Do we have any idea if the 80-year-old was, was brought from a nursing home? Um, I do not have the direct information, but I believe that person was transferred from another facility. Another hospital? I'm not sure exactly the facility. I've just um, understand that it came, that that person came to the hospital from another facility. Okay, and then and then also there's been a case reported through the Erie VA Hospital. Um, do you have any information on that case? I do not have any information on on that. Thank you. Uh, Talk Erie. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, we're getting reports about. Uh, uh, people in big box stores going to, you know, a store that might have groceries, but uh, some of the stores have their, maybe their toys and clothing and other items that are non-life essential poured and off. And we have, uh, we have people being abusive to the workers at those stores. What is exactly is the guidance for, let's say, I don't want to pick on anybody but a Target or a Walmart. What's allowed to be open? What's not allowed to be open? Is it a lot of uh, the, the company's own ju uh, jurisdiction, or is there a rule that they have to follow that's coming from the state? You know, Joel, I don't really have the uh, correct answer on that. So if you don't mind, I will get the answer and bring that back to you tomorrow. But, um, you know, my um, enforcement uh, entity they can look into that for me and get me that information directly so that I can have a, a really true, clear answer for you. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, I don't have that for you today. Um, Erie News Now. Hi, hoping for a little clarification on this, and forgive me if I missed it earlier, but are either of these two new cases in the hospital, or is our only hospitalized case still the uh, person in their 80s from yesterday? Uh, that is my understanding. The only person that is hospitalized is the individual that I spoke of yesterday. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Sure. Jet TV, do you have any other questions? And, and John DeMatteis yeah. is also here for questions if anyone has any for him. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to uh, see if you had an update regarding any of the previous cases that uh, we've discussed over these conferences. Do you have an update? Are any of them, I guess, considered, quote, unquote, recovered from COVID-19? So I, I believe that some of our earliest cases have already reached that point where they are symptom free and they um, are now reaching the point where they are at least 72 hours, which is three days um, without any symptoms. So you have to get to the point where you're symptom free and then stay in for another 72 hours before you could resume uh, the stay at home order that all the rest of us are under. So it still doesn't mean we want you out roaming around, but that person then would have the ability maybe to run to the grocery store for some groceries, um, you know, go put gas in their car, those type of things that the rest of us are trying to limit ourselves in doing. Um, so I don't know the numbers of that, but my understanding is that some of our very early cases have reached that point. Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. Erie Times News. Yes, Kathy, I want to get your thoughts on, on what the governor and Secretary Levine said earlier this afternoon about wearing masks. I mean, this is what we've seen over the last 24 hours has been quite a reversal um, of, of U.S. policy. Get your take on that. I mean, we've heard so long that wearing masks out in public is helping prevent you from spreading illnesses to other people. We're starting to see a change on that. What's your take on it? Well, you know, this is a very much of an evolving pandemic, as we've seen for the last months. Um, new information comes out all the time on this. There's still much about this virus that we do not know. Um, you know, the one thing that I think still continues to baffle people is how many people might be out there and be asymptomatic um, that we don't know about and, and what does that even look like. We don't have enough testing, as we all know. We've spoken about that before, so we can't do the massive testing that they've done in some other countries. And so um, I think that the wearing the mask, if we have a mask that's available and it's not a mask that would be used by our health care providers, our first responders, 
then I think it doesn't uh, hurt to wear the mask. Um, but we didn't want to ever give people a false sense of security with that mask. So the mask should be worn when you're in a low risk situation, meaning like a bandana or a homemade mask. That would be in what we call a low risk situation that you might be in, not when you're with somebody or uh, a very likely chance that you're with somebody with um, active COVID-19 disease. So uh, it may also, it may also help you from touching your face, but I know I've heard some other things that sometimes having a mask makes you touch your face more because you've got this thing there and you're adjusting it. So I would be very careful when you're wearing a mask and you are out that you still don't touch your face as much as you can avoid that. And you know, obviously as soon as you get back in your car, use your hand sanitizer if you have some, and I hope you all do. Um, and uh, if not, you know, go to a place, go home quickly and wash your hands real well and, and clean off your steering wheel and those type of things. But those are some of the concerns with masks that sometimes we touch our face more. But I understand, you know, if someone does have a little sniffle or a little cold and maybe they don't even know that they're, they're even getting sick, having a mask on may feel, make others feel better, make themselves feel better, and just one more layer of slight protection. But again, the best thing we can do is stay home. Talk Erie. Yes, ma'am. At one point last week, you were uh, questioning whether or not you were going to keep the rumor hotline going. Is that still going? And of course, uh, what is the, the uh, kind of activity on the community chat line as well? Well, I'm going to have John DiMatteo answer the question on the community chat line. And the rumor line is still up and running, and we still have that available for people if they would like to call it. And that number is uh, 451. <laughs> 6986 and that is really to just verify things that you might hear that you're not sure about it's really to um to to try to debunk inaccurate news um that you might have heard or you question something maybe you saw on social media uh, you know there's been things out there that certain nasal sprays cure it and uh, hair dryers and things like that, which are all rumors, they don't. And so this is where the rumor hotline can help people. They're trying to find out the answers, the true answers to those type of questions. And again, if you do have something that you need to talk to somebody about, then that's where our uh, chat line is open. And I'm gonna ask John DiMatteo just to speak to the uh, traffic on that line. John? So the community chat line, I had a uh, chance yesterday to talk to the folks manning that and They've seen about 60 different people who have called that line since uh, it was debuted last week. Um, since that time, uh, once the rumor line was launched, they saw the traffic start to go down a little bit uh, because I think people were calling with, with just some verifications around things that they may have seen. Uh, since that, uh, I've talked to many of uh, my counterparts across the state who have replicated that chat line in their own communities, especially to give some comfort to the aging and elderly who just felt very uncomfortable uh, about all the things they were seeing on the news. Er Erie News Now. Hi, a question for you regarding masks. Uh, I talked with a couple of callers today who A said it's, it's nearly impossible to find any masks out there to purchase. And so then uh, even if they're making their own or if they happen to have some store-bought ones, any guidance on usage in terms of whether or not things can be reused or if you should wear a mask and then dispose of it right away? And also, again, your recommendation to people who maybe can't find masks in stores and uh, maybe aren't terribly handy with a sewing machine. So I know on the Pennsylvania Department of Health website, and I believe it's on ours now too, they said they have instructions on how to make them easily. I haven't had a chance to look at those yet. Um, so, you know, check those out first. Um, a bandana, if you have any kind of a scarf, um, you know, you can just put it on your face and tie it in the back. I um, myself was planning to pick up a few groceries while I'm out before I go home and stay at home. So I wanted, I, I was like, wow, what do I have in my car? Well, I have a scarf in my car. So I'm just gonna take that scarf that I have and I'm gonna wrap it around my mouth and tie it as tight as I can in the back and just wear that. So most of us, we live in Erie, so we have some kind of scarf usually. Um, even wearing a scarf would be helpful. I've heard some people wearing, um, something that maybe they wear uh, running in the winter, you know, to try to keep their lungs from getting burned. Um, I've seen people even just pulling the top of their turtleneck over their face. So anything where you have a barrier between your mouth and anything else is a good place to start, I guess is the best thing. Now, in terms of cleaning it, 
Um, I would do like what I ask everyone to do with anything is wash it. Uh, soap and water kills this virus. Any household cleaner kills this virus. So uh, if you have a mask and you get home, just get some soap and water, dunk it in there, scrub it around a little bit, and uh, do it for 20 seconds if you want to be really careful, and then hang it up to dry, and it'll be ready to go the next time you're going out the door. And any guidance on those store-bought masks? If I happen to have one of those, am I able to reuse it, or is that something that I need to pitch and then uh, move on to something homemade? Well, you know, I think it depends on what the material is. If Can you wash it off or not? You know, I think if you can wash it, go ahead and use it. If it's something that cannot be washed, you know, a lot of those ones, uh, by the time you wear it a second time, who knows what's on it, and now your fingers have been all over it, and it, it, I think it's probably not as safe as having something that you could reuse by washing it. I'm not an expert on masks, let me say that. This is all fairly new information that just came out today. I'm going to try to bone up a little bit more on this, but from the limited information that I've had beforehand and what I you know, have read quickly, um, I'm trying to give you the best advice I can. But Thanks. try to stop top, touching your face uh, until you've actually washed your hands really well when you get home. That would be really helpful to anybody, mask or no mask. Um, Jet TV? Yeah. Um, so this might be a little out of your realm, but the school districts are obviously offering hotspots for uh, students who might not have internet service at their house. So uh, does this mean students will be gathering together and then who will be making sure they're at least staying six feet apart from each other? Well, you're right. That's going to be a challenge. Um, hopefully, many of these children will be in a car and they should stay in their own car and not go into someone else's car. Um, obviously, as the weather gets nicer, people might want to sit outside and have a chair out there or sit on the curb. And, you know, it gets concerning when people start gathering in one place. But we have a huge issue in this county, and we've known that. We've been trying to get the resources to uh, have this fixed and find providers who would come in and provide Internet access to people. But um, even when there is high-speed Internet available in many people's neighborhoods, they don't have the funds to pay for it. So it's a, it's a big issue, and I think that's going to really be um, the job of the parents. Let's just start right there, the parents, to inform their children about how important it is to stay six feet apart. Uh, if they're in a school yard, uh, hopefully there are some people in the school building, uh, maintenance people or whoever it might be, who could help, you know, disperse crowds if they are, you know, coming together. And, of course, anyone who has a concern about a large group gathering or any uh, incidents of uh, not socially distancing, not being physically apart, they can always call 451-6700 and report that and we'll go out and then try to explain to people why it's important that they do. Erie Times News? Uh, yes, Kathy. Um, so 530 total negative tests, I think you, you had said earlier. Um, I think that was only 15 more tests than yesterday. Is it a concern at all that we're seeing relatively few tests? Well, as I've always said, we needed more tests. We need a lot more tests. But um, the people that are being tested are the ones who are symptomatic. So I guess if you think of it that way, it's actually a good thing. And we don't have as many people symptomatic as we had even just a couple days ago. Um, so maybe our social distancing is actually working better even than we know. And maybe that's going to help keep our numbers from advancing over the next few days. Uh, every day that we keep our numbers low, is a day that's better for Erie County and saving lives here. So I've had both hospitals thank us for really working hard to do what we call that flattening the curve. It has given them so much more opportunity to ramp up in terms of supplies and, and plans and all the things they need to do in case we do have a surge here in Erie County. And so having another day, another day, another day, all those days out there is going to help our hospitals be there if and when we might need them. So I'm not really concerned from the viewpoint that maybe we just have less people who are active with COVID-19 symptoms, but I am concerned that we still don't have enough testing and we should be doing much larger, wider community testing, and we should have had that honestly months ago. Um, talk Erie. Last question, ma'am. Uh can you speak to what seems to be really surging, which is the unemployment rate? We saw the national rate. Uh, we have a handle on uh, statewide claims. We don't know exactly what Erie County claims are. But can you respond as, as the leader of the county 
to all of these thousands of folks from every different corner of the Erie County economy now out of a job. So the hope is when this is over that all of those people can get back to work where they worked and our businesses will be up and going. But the problem in the meantime is that many of these people don't have any savings. You know, it was always said to people, have three months of savings just in case, whatever that might be. Here's a perfect example. But unfortunately, we're in this place right now and too many people, either because they weren't making enough, much, enough money to even put money away, don't have that three months of cushion. And so they have nothing coming back in the door. And not only that, but many of these people have lost their health care coverage or will be losing it soon. And we're talking about a pandemic. We're in the middle of a pandemic. And so that has really got to be looked at from the federal government side. I was on, um, when I, on my way up here, I was listening to one of the shows on the radio and they were talking about another stimulus bill and that potentially that stimulus bill would give a check to every person who's laid off, giving them the same salary that they have, not just $1,200, but the same salary that they had prior to layoff and open up Medicare uh, for all of these people who suddenly find themselves uninsured and open that up and let those people on there temporarily until they get back to work. These are huge issues, uh, national issues, of course, that we debate all the time outside of this pandemic, but we are in an unprecedented time. You know, um, I don't know what is going to come out of the federal government. Obviously, in county government, we don't have the resources or the wherewithal to be able to do what they can do on the federal level, but those things need to be really um, strongly debated and discussed uh, because this is going to become devastating for so many in our community who won't be able to pay any bills. They won't be able to pay their rent or their mortgage, their car payment. They won't even be able to go out and buy groceries. And um, that just begins to create a whole nother myriad of problems, not even to begin to speak if by chance they did get sick and are hospitalized and the bills that would come from that. So I want people to know that I understand your plight. I understand how scary and frightening this is right now for so many people. And so all of us need to be very cognizant of that and making sure that we're keeping in touch with all of our friends and our family distantly, the internet, the phone, those kind of ways, but be in touch with people. And if you can help someone out through this, please do that. Be that good family member, be that neighbor, help people through this because people are going to hit very, very tough times, times very soon if they haven't already. And as we know, we are at least until April 30th under the stay at home order. And so many, many businesses will be closed to a minimum for the next four weeks. Erie News Now. Hi, one final one for you here. Our numbers have been just phenomenally low. And I'm wondering, A, you know, why you think that is? Is it just that we got ahead of the curve? Is it that we're more spread out? Are we just a little bit behind these other metropolitan areas and there might be more coming our way? And uh, understanding, of course, that you don't have a crystal ball, that you can't uh, predict the future. But do you think we will continue to see just this steady one case, two case, you know, maybe three cases here and there? Or do you think that we will start to see this ramp up a little bit more in our area? My prayer and my hope is that we will continue to have just this one or two case movement forward until we have none. Um, I think we're at where we're at because there's great people working every day to keep us at this level. We have made tough decisions, often not popular decisions, um, shutting down the St. Patrick's Day parade, uh, doing the stay at home order when we only had five active cases in our county telling people even before the stay at home order that we needed to stay home. Um, I've been on these press briefings every day now for quite a, quite a few days. I don't even know how many. And my message pretty much has been the same. And I think that the people of this community, and I think this is the number one reason why we're at, it's because the people of this community know that they are partners in this and they are doing the right thing. And that's what we need everyone to continue to do. You know, just one more example. I was talking yesterday about the snowbirds coming back and just an example of how you could help them out by filling up their fridge before they step back in their house. But someone else was saying that even after somebody comes back and they're in their home for 14 days, that doesn't mean you suddenly go out and start seeing your grandkids again and your, and your children. No, you still need to keep distant from them. 
because people do still go out to the grocery store. People still do have some interactions with others. So you're, after 14 days, free yourself to go out to the grocery store and do those kind of things, but you still need to stay at least six, six feet away from anybody that doesn't live in your house. If you are living in the house with that person, obviously, that's fine. But for people that do not live in your home, and I don't care if there's your grandkids, your children, your mom and dad, um, you need to just stay away for their safety, for your safety, and for the safety of our community. And I'm just so grateful to the people of this community. When I mentioned a few days ago where we were in the lineup of, uh, of Pennsylvania counties, we were still in the 20s, even though we're, only, we're number 15 in population, and now we're number 31 and we're 15% of the population. So that's showing that um, counties much smaller than us often have numbers that are growing much more rapidly than ours. Um, we're doing the right thing, and I am thankful to the people of this community for helping us do that. Jet TV, do you have any last question? I do not, thank you. How about Erie Times News? Uh, sure, Kathy. Um, one, one question and, and one thing for tomorrow, perhaps. If, if you could confirm for me for tomorrow, whether either of the 80-something-year-old patients did come from a nursing home or not, if we, if we could find that out tomorrow. Um, the question for now is, is um, any of the businesses that the Environmental Task Force has gone to, have any of them reached a point where they've been cited or fined? No. All the businesses that we've gone to, um, once we go out there and meet with them, um, they have all become compliant. Uh, we had one business on, like, the first or second day, which basically defied us for 24 hours, and... Then we came back and we said the next time we come out, now it will be a fine. And the next day they were compliant. So we have had no issues with any business not complying once we get out there. Talk, thank Erie, you. do you have any last questions? Uh, no, ma'am, thank you. Okay, and Erie News, now, now I think you said you were done too, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, lastly, I just want to say to everyone, thank you for everything you're doing again. Um, we cannot do this alone. You are our partners in this. Thank you to John DiMatteo for being with me. There are many, many resources out there for you. Go on our webpage, eriecountypa.gov, or always you feel free to call 451-6700. I know we got a message in from a woman who said she's in her 80s. She doesn't have the internet. She doesn't have a computer. She depends on these news briefings and other more traditional media forms to get her messages. And so thank you to our media for being our partners in this. We need you and you've been great. So with all of you, stay safe, stay home, and stay calm.